Paul Carberry, how do you describe the, the, the meat man? Well, you know, he's been he's been part of my life for so long now. He's more like a son to me than a than a or a best friend than anything else. And like we've had ups and downs and good days and bad days, but through it all, he's I've enjoyed being part of his life. I hope he's enjoyed being part of mine. Yeah, um, it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster over the years. Yeah, it has been. Uh, like it wasn't, as I say, it wasn't always good days. You know, we had our we had our ups and our downs. But uh, the good days were good, and so that's racing. Though we've had some bad days as well. And um, he's a very, very talented guy. He's a he's he's has a lot of talent. A very honest fella too. You know, like I mean, the one thing that I always knew when Paul was riding for me that he was doing his best. And like, despite a lot of people watching him ride would think that you know he leaves a horse very far out of his ground or whatever I never had any fear with that that Paul wasn't was wasn't doing his best I knew he like he was doing it the way he thought was right I rarely ever give him instructions very like we might discuss horses but I wouldn't tie, ever tie him down to the instructions because he's a natural talent and, and people with natural talent like that can do the job much better than than they can do by telling them, you know. And while lots, while lots of punters will have uh, their hearts in their mouths plenty of time, you never do. No, because now and again, look, nobody does it right all the time. Nobody does it, gets it right all the time, and he'd admit that himself. But I don't. Punters don't realise, and nowadays racing is analysed so much on the racing channels and. Uh, by somebody sitting in a booth and they're saying, oh, he left him too much to do and he doesn't. People don't realise that there's only so fast a horse can run. And if you push him out of that comfort zone too quick, he his legs go on him and he doesn't get home. And other times, sometimes horses, their wind is not very good and they, they're gasping. And a jockey has to give him a chance. And what makes Paul so good is that he's not afraid to do that. He's not afraid to give them the chance. and not afraid to do it. Like, he takes the criticism after, he'd stand on it. Like, I've seen him being barracked and, and abused by, by punters afterwards. But, like, Paul, like, is Paul. It didn't change him. The following day, he came come out and he ride them the same way that he thinks is best. And nine times out of ten, or 99 times out of 100, it is best. Yeah, very hard to ask this, but can you, is there one highlight that, that stands out between the series? Um, I, I'm sure there are a lot of highlights. Uh, a lot of highlights. I think maybe Archibald uh, winning in um, the Christmas hurdle in Kempton, the the year that he that he came from way off the pace behind um, um, the the grey horse of Philip Hobbs that won the champion hurdle Mr. Booster. Mr. Rooster Booster and it looked like as if he wasn't going to get there and, and of course he did and eventually won uh, snug enough for the death and um, I wasn't there but when he came back I, I, like I was in Leopardstown and sometimes I think when you watch these races away from the track you get more of a kick out of them but the following day uh, I said you gave him a long lead I said it was a long way oh I was never in doubt he said never in doubt <laughs> Tell us, we're into the national hunt season again, it's upon us once again. Um, how are your string shaping up for this season? Okay, I'm just a little worried that we haven't the ammunition that we had over the last number of years. Uh, we seem to be down a good few horses. Uh, like, I mean, I would have thought we have half the number we had in the in the good days of the of the Celtic Tiger. A um, few nice horses, hopefully we have Red Dove there still and, and, and Pandorama. Uh, Hopefully, we'll be out around Christmas, but um, I, I think the novice chasers might be a little bit, might be a little bit uh, low on the ground. Maybe the novice hurdlers will make up for them with a few, few nice ones coming along. Any ideas where you might send Pandora? What's the well, if one? if we've because when he ran in the Gold Cup and I didn't really want to run him, I didn't want to run him because the ground was too so quick. But uh, Robert, who owned Robert Bangle, who owns him, was insistent that he'd have to run and he'd have to run. Uh, we were worried about him after the race and and when he came home for a few days we were worried that he, he could have jarred his legs. Now he seems to have been okay, we gave him a lot of time and we were late bringing him back in and we've taken him along very gently but I still would be afraid to take any chances with him because he is, he's a very heavy horse and he's very heavy, heavy action. So the Lexus at Christmas would be the first that I'd be thinking. Uh, any young horses that you want to keep? Well, look, sure. I I would hope that that um, 
some of the bumper horses that won last year, like Texas Jack maybe, and, and, and Dylan Ross are two nice horses. We'd hope that they could run, that they'll be competitive in good races this year. Thanks, Thanks. No, mate. Thanks Okay. So